So let us continue with the third video for this week. Now, we've already seen binary codes. We talked about how we how a digital system interprets user inputs. We've also showed uh, examples of binary codes with the most prominent ones being BCD and ASCII. And now we're going to focus on the gray code. So what is a gray code? A gray code is a sequence of binary numbers where only one bit changes at a time. And this is the key element of gray codes. Now, what you see on this uh, figure is just a graphical representation of an invention made by uh, inventor Frank Gray, which gave his name to the gray code. So historically, gray code became a necessity because of electromechanical applications of digital systems, such as automotive braking systems. In such examples, it is sometimes necessary for some sensor to produce a digital value that indicates a mechanical position. And this is an example of an obsolete encoder converting light to a grade code. So as you can see, the light goes through this rotating disk, and then somehow it is converted to a grade code which of course you can output or you can pass it through a converter and then convert it to a BCD output. As we said, what is characteristic about gray codes is that only one bit changes at the time. Now let's take a look again at this obsolete encoder. As you can see, position transducers, trans transducers are used to measure the angle of a shaft. And this application benefits from the cyclic nature of gray codes. As you can probably guess, after a full cycle, you, re you return back to the same code. Now, things will become more clear when we start focusing on more concrete examples in the next slides. Now, this is an example of a rotating disk. To be more rigorous, it's a conceptual sketch of an encoding disk and a set of contacts that produce three bit coded values after the disk's rotational position. So imagine that this disk rotates and each time those three contacts touch parts of the disk. Now, as you can see, a white part of the disk is mapped to a zero bit and here again the same applies for the second most uh, important bit and then for the least important bit over here you see that it's a gray area so this is mapped to a one value overall in this disk we have set, uh, we have eight positions which means that with those three bits you can have um, eight possible values. This is something that you should be expecting by now, that you're familiar with binary numbers. However, note that there is a problem. Now imagine that as this disk is rotating, there is a chance that those three hands over here, those three contacts, they get trapped in the boundary between two different segments, between two different areas. And let's focus on the example over here between 0, 0, 1 and 0, 1, 0. Now, as you can see, the possible outputs because of the boundary over here can be anything like 0, 1, 1, which can happen if this contact is touching this area while the other one uh, interprets uh, its uh, sensory input like touching the gray area over here and the third one is still touching the gray area from the previous position. Or it could even be 0, 0, 0 in case those two first ones touch the zero area from the previous segment while the third contact touches the next position over here. As you can see, this is a serious mistake uh, because instead of uh, 
outputting something which is close to 001 or close to 010, the possible outputs can be way off. This one refers to the third position, while this one refers to the first position over here, almost a full cycle away. And that is problematic. And the reason why this happens is because we're not using a, a gray code. Now, let's see what happens when you're using a gray code. In this example, you see that each time only one bit changes. And to be more precise, if we focus on this area over here, you see that the value remains the same here between the two positions. Now, the value of this bit changes. However, the value of this bit doesn't change. And if you continue comparing all the positions uh, with their next position, you will notice that it's always only one of the colors that changes. Like in this case, it's this color which is mapped to the least significant bit. While when you cross to the next position, it's the most significant bit that changes and only that. Now, a gray code is what we call a reflected code. The example which I showed you in the previous slide, where you could have serious mistakes if the hands uh, were located in the boundaries between two different areas of the disk, this cannot happen. And this is because the gray code is a reflected code. And the best way to understand this is by letting you read those two properties before we cross to the next slide where I'm going to show you an example. So let's understand what the reflected code is in the case of a gray code based on this example. Suppose that you want to construct an n plus one bit gray code. Now, in our example, we're going to construct a two-bit gray code, which means that the value of n is 1, so that 1 plus 1 makes 2, so that you got a two-bit gray code. The first step is to construct an n-bit gray code, in this case, a one-bit gray code. And obviously, that would look like that. The second step is to construct your 2-bit gray code and you do that by using the gray code that you have from the previous step by appending zeros in the beginning of them. And the last step, well, you do things the other way around. You reverse the previous gray code, so instead of 1 of 0, 1, you make it one zero and you append a prefix of ones. So this is how we ended up with a two bit gray code. Now ask yourselves, how would you build a three bit gray code? If you think of it, you would have to take this two bit gray code and follow the same algorithm. The first step would be taking the 2-bit gray code. The second step would involve appending zeros before it. And the third step would involve the second half of the gray code, which would be by reversing the order of these uh, bit strings and appending uh, ones uh, as a prefix. Now, think of it again. For a 2-bit gray code, we run through the steps once. In general, for an n plus one bit gray code, you run the steps n times. In the case of a three bit gray code, what you would do is that you would construct first a two bit gray code, and then you would look back, and with this two bit gray code, you would construct the three bit gray code. So if for a three bit gray code, you need two repeats, you see again that the end over here is what gives you the number of repeats of these steps. 
and the process is quite straightforward. Guaranteeing always that when you cross from one bit string to the next, it's only one bit that changes at the time. Now let's see a real life example. Suppose that you have this water tank and that you're trying to uh, convert into a digital signal um, the, the measurement of uh, the water tank. Now let's notice what happens when you're not using a gray code. If you're trapped in the boundary between those two, then you may get as an output 1111, which is completely erroneous because it gives you the illusion that the water tank is full. And the same problem, the same example applies also here. Now let's see again what happens if you're using a gray code. If you're using a gray code, you will not have the same issues. Even when your mechanism is trapped somewhere between two neighboring measurements. If it is off, it won't be for much. Like in this case, it will either be zero or one, because this is the only thing that changes. So the measurement in worst case will be a little bit off. The same applies also here. As you can see between those two neighboring gray codes, what is changing is the most significant bit. So in worst case, one of them will be wrong and they, the indication will be either of the two neighboring uh, measurements, which means that the error is not that big. And with that, we have reached to the end of the final video for this week.